everyone. Um, it's that time of year for insurance enrollment. So I wanted to first, I'm going to spend the first few minutes just talking about kind of the changes in healthcare this year. Um, it's a lot confusing for everybody, I think. Um, and then after that, we'll talk about our specific plan. So those of you that aren't electing coverage um, can probably scoot out after the first few minutes. <laughs> um, so basically, the with 2014, all the insurance companies um, have minimum coverage levels. There's all the rules that they have to comply with with all their new plans. So they have minimum coverage levels. Uh, they have the lifetime maximum on the policy has gone away, so they can't cut you off after you reach, you know, it's, it's usually at one million or two million over the life of your policy. Um, so that's gone away. Um, there's mandated preventive care in every policy that's covered at 100%. So they cannot charge you a copay or coinsurance on anything for the specific list of preventive care. There's a list for children and then there's a list for adults. So um, for the most part for adults, it's your annual physical, um, your, your GYN physical as well. Um, it covers mammograms at a certain age. It, at 40, it covers colonoscopies at 50. Um, routine mammograms and routine colonoscopies, which just means your annual visit and uh, blood work and things associated with those services. Uh, so like I said, that's mandated in all of these plans now. Um, they have also taken out the way that they rate the plans, meaning they can't rate up for health claims anymore. The only way that they can rate up is it's an age-based tier. Depending on your age, that determines your premium. Um, it's not sex. They can't rate up for women versus men or men versus women at certain age groups anymore. Uh, so the only thing they can rate up other than age is whether you are a smoker or not. Um, smokers do pay a significant, hot, significantly higher premium than non-smokers. It's about 20% difference in premium. So, and that is a question on the application. So um, with all that being said, that's kind of the basics. I want to make sure that if you know, um, I read heard about the subsidies and everything. The, if you have a group plan through your employer, you're not eligible for subsidies in the marketplace. So you can't go into the exchange, you can go into the exchange and get insurance, but you're not eligible for any subsidies. So if you decline your employer's plan, then you're basically on your own for the full cost of the insurance. Um, to enroll in the exchange, the deadline is March 31st for any of those people that have elect to do that. Um, there is an option in the exchange for those of you that have children that you can go out and get a children only plan. Um, you don't have to have the adults on the plan with you. And it is pretty reasonable, uh, so you might want to check that out if you want to cover your children. Um, so for those of you that are not electing coverage due to the fact that you have it with your spouse or some other policy that you have on the outside that you want to maintain, you still need to turn in an application to me, and there's a box on there that says that you're declining because you have other coverage. Um, and if you would just get that back to me, um, then you are probably done here because you don't need to hear about our plan. <laughs> uh, and the, the application was attached at the top of the email, I mean at the top of the web page, so you can download it from there. It will also be available on Google Docs in the employees folder where all the other benefit information is. And, um, and then if you have any questions specifically about your coverage and how it relates to you specifically, you can call me uh, directly after this broadcast. Okay. So into the actual changes in what we had versus where we're going. We are, um, we have switched over to one of the metal plans, which is what they're calling these new plans in the exchange. They're called metal plans because they have them tiered, bronze, silver, gold, and platinum, based on the level of coverage you want to offer or select. So we are switching to one of those plans, which has all of the things in it that I've spoken about with the new, um, new guidelines. And so you have two sheets. You have, in the past we've offered a two-tier plan. We have a PPO type plan, which is your traditional copay type plan, and then we have our high deductible plan, which uh, you meet your deductible first and then pay your claim. We are still continuing to offer two options. So I just kind of wanted to highlight the differences between the new plans and kind of what we have now. Um, the first one we'll go over is the sheet labeled the Blue Cross Option 1. That is the PPO type plan. Um, 
This for single coverage, the benefit, the deductible is now $2,000. That is down from the $2,500 on the old plan, so the deductible went down $500. After you meet your deductible, your coinsurance kicks in, and the coinsurance is 20% instead of 30% on the old plan, so that's also an improvement. Um, and then that coinsurance kicks in until you reach an out-of-pocket of $6,350, of which is the out-of-pocket maximum for single coverage. The coinsurance, as you probably are familiar with, is basically anything outside of your doctor's offices uh, goes towards deductible and then coinsurance. So x-rays, um, lab work outside of your normal physical, um, MRIs, things like that, hospital admissions, that kind of stuff. Um, goes towards your deductible and then your coinsurance. One of the biggest changes with these new plans is that your out-of-pocket number, that 6350, is now a true out-of-pocket number. Um, in the past, you had to meet, you might have co-pays, and then you would have a deductible, and then you have your co-insurance. And those are all three separate things, three separate buckets. Your co-payments your co don't apply to your deductibles, your deductible doesn't apply to your out-of-pocket. Three separate monies. So the total of all that, on our old plan was $7,500 plus any co-pays you would have had to pay out of pocket would be your out of pocket expense. On these new plans, everything dumps into your out of pocket bucket. So all of your co-pays that you spend over the course of a year apply to that 6350 number. And that's a big difference for those pe for people that do go to the doctor a lot. If you have three or four specialists that you see a couple times a year, just right there, I mean, that's hundreds of dollars right there in co-pays that you will now have applied towards your total out-of-pocket expense. Um, and speaking of specialists, uh, that is another improvement on this plan as opposed to our old plan. The old plan, all your specialist visits went deductible, applied first to deductibles and then co-insurance before they would contribute towards the plan. You had to meet your deductible first to go to specialists. On this new plan, there is a $60 copay for specialist visits, meaning anything done in the office as a specialist that they actually do and bill from that office is covered under that copay. Uh, you just you have to be aware a little bit that you know the doctors are moving a lot towards outsourcing a lot of their things. So if they outsource lab work somewhere else, or you have to go out somewhere else and get a scan, that's billed separately, so that's not included in that visit. People don't do everything all under the same roof anymore. Um, so the next section you will see what I mentioned about the preventive benefits. And like I said, that is federally mandated and that applies on all new insurance plans that are out there. And then you see the prescription drug coverage, uh, you know, standard copays. Those copays as well go towards your out of pocket. And then the mail order, if you use mail order, you get a discount. So if you order several months at a time, you can get a discount. So that is basically the first plan. Um, if you do have family members that you want to add, the new pricing structure, the old pricing structures, we had a flat figure for single coverage, employee plus children, employee family. So it was very easy for me to tell you what your cost would be for adding your dependents. Everything now is age-based, as I mentioned. So if you are a person and you have a five-year-old and a 23-year-old, then that you get charged for the five-year-old and the 23-year-old based on whatever age they are. So if you want to get a price for adding dependents, uh, give me a call and I can tell you specifically what it would cost you or your spouse as well because your spouse would be added based on their age. Um, so I would have to give you a specific quote for your coverage based on the age of the people in your family. So call me and I can walk you through that. Um, and then there are some different um, deductible issues for family coverage as well that we can discuss. Um, if you want to do that. The second plan is the one that says HSA option at the top or on the bottom, whichever one you can read. For those that have had the HSA, um, it is a, it's a good plan for people basically that don't go to the doctor very often, don't have a lot of prescription plans, prescription things. It's kind of more like a, if something happens, I want to have something in place, otherwise I'm not really going to spend anything during the course of the year plan or somebody that really knows they've got some big health issues and is going to max their um, plan out. It's a good option for those type of people. And if you, have a, if you have trouble deciding which of the two, then you can call me and we can talk through your specific situation as well. 
Um, but the HSA works, it's a high deductible health plan, meaning that $3,000 deductible up top. The plan covers preventive care at 100%. Anything outside of preventive care goes towards that deductible. So that includes prescriptions, doctor's visits, anything and everything else other than preventive care all goes towards that $3,000 deductible. Now keep in mind what you pay and what you're charged towards your deductible is negotiated blue cross rates. Um, they are significantly less than what the doctor's office will charge. They, I mean, whenever you get your ex explanation of benefits, you always see that big write-off on the bill. So they make the provider write off discount so that you pay the other amount. And that is what you will be charged for towards this $3,000. So just by being having the insurance, you get the benefit of those huge discounts. And Blue Cross has the largest discounts in the area. Um, you can, from plan to plan, you will get the biggest write-off by having a Blue Cross plan as opposed to any other plan. So all that adds up to the $3,000. Once the $3,000 is met, then you will pay 50% of all other costs, prescriptions, doctor's visits, everything that I mentioned, up to the 63.50 out of pocket. Both of these plans have the same 63.50 out of pocket. That's kind of like a federal number. Um, it's a minimum, or it's a, it's a number that they put out that they can't charge you more per plan out of pocket. So they have put a cap on that. And that's, so you'll see that number a lot in employee plans. Uh, it's a, pretty much it's pretty cut and dry. I mean, you meet your deductible, you pay 50% up until 63.50. There's not a whole lot of wiggle room in there other than preventative care. Um, the benefit with an HSA, for those of you that have one, is that you can fund an, a health savings account that you can set up at a bank. Um, we have a bunch of them set up at First Federal through the company, and then I fund through payroll deduction. Um, and if you set it up through there and do payroll deduction, uh, it's a 30, we pay the $35 annual fee that it takes to maintain that account. Um, you fund the account, whatever you want to, it's up to you. You can change it at any time. You can say, I have a big sit coming up this month, so I'm gonna fund $500 this month and then knock it back down. So that's all up to you. Whatever you put into that account is taken out pre-tax. So you do not pay taxes on that amount. So that is the big, really huge benefit for an HSA. And you can fund up to, I believe for 2014, it's $33.50. I would have to check that number. It's maybe give or take $100 if it's not that number. So you can fund up to $33.50 a year into that tax-free account. It does not, it's not like a, I don't know if you've heard about some of the medical savings accounts. Some of the accounts, um, if you don't use it, you lose it. It's the health savings account is not like that. It's yours until you spend it and draw that account down to zero. So even if we discontinue the plan, if, even if you discontinued and didn't have this plan anymore, you can still use that account and all the money in that account until it's used up. Uh, so it's kind of like, it is a savings account or, you know, later down the road, maybe 10 years from now, if you have bigger health issues, it's, you can start building up a tax-free savings account for health issues. Um, and it is a, it's, it, they are set up as interest-bearing, not that that really matters right now, since the interest rate on savings accounts is like 0.1%. <laughs> but maybe one day that might have a bearing on something. <laughs> um, Keep in mind that the health savings account has to be pa partnered with this account. You can't go and set up a health savings account for the other account. There are certain criteria that the government has in place for that have to be met. It has to be a high deductible health plan, which is what this is. So, uh, let's go through that and that. Um, the payroll deductions will be effective on your next paycheck because we do deduct a month in advance. If you have change, if you're changing your plan, adding coverage, deleting coverage, all those adjustments will be made at, on that last paycheck. So you, you might be doing a refund or you might have to pay a little bit more, whatever the difference is based on what you choose, it'll all be adjusted on the 330 paycheck. Um, if you are a smoker, uh, you will pay more for your insurance. The extra 20% will be charged to you and that is based on your age. So, uh, that goes up with age. The premium will go up with age and the 20%, so then will consequently go up with age. The, uh, like I said, if you have additional family members, it's per person, so call me for rates on those people. Um, a couple things that we are losing with this coverage is 
there's no more any vision, no more vision coverage on our plan. So we do offer the companion vision plan as a supplement to this that you can enroll in. We do already have about eight people enrolled in the vision plan. So if you want to add vision to your plan, it's a basic plan and the employee rate is $8 a month. Uh, it covers a you know, basic eye exam every year, has a gla uh, glasses and contact benefits, and that's pretty much what it covers. It doesn't cover any extra you know, major stuff that they run in the office, but it covers the basics. Kind of basically comparable to what we have on our Blue Choice plan. So if you want to add that, those applications are available in Google, Google Docs. The benefits are listed in Google Docs as well under the Dental Vision section. And the Dental Network is also there, so you can see which doctors are uh, available that you can go to. Uh, to send that applicant, you can fill that application in if you're interested in that and send that in to me when you send in your health application and we will get that set up. The EAP, the Employee Assistant Programs that we had in conjunction with our Early Choice Plan will also go away. I'm not sure how many people used that, but that was like a supplemental plan for people that had, it had some counseling benefits and things like that. Uh, and that is not carried forward to the new plan, so that goes away as well. Um, okay, so now the application, I just want to make sure everybody's kind of clear on what to do. Oh, well, you know, let me touch on the rates real quick. I gave you the rate sheet. The top section is the, for 2013, those are the rates that we were paying per plan. The bottom section is, are the new rates per plan. plan, per plan. So both coverages go down about $10 a month for the employee, which is very nice because in the past we've been used to um, at least 10 to 20% increases on our health insurance. Um, and this year they're actually going down, so it's nice. And we'll see how that plays out the first year of coverage. That's, that, that's everybody's thing. It's the first year will tell the tale, I guess. Um, so everything goes down a little bit. If you do change plans, there is the bottom one is the high deductible plan, and then the top one is the PPO plan. As in the past, the PPO plan is more expensive than the high deductible plan. So that kind of, the rates kind of went, go in a same relationship as they did last year for those. It's about a $75 difference in, free, in monthly cost. So you have to weigh that into effect too with, um, when you're comparing the deductible <coughs> as far as your monthly savings from your paycheck. And for those of you that have been in the plan, just those premiums are deducted free tax. So. Uh, on the application, just a few basic things to touch on because I know it'll be questions. Um, there is an option to go paperless if you'd like to receive your EOBs electronically and not get all that stuff in the mail. Please check yet. Um, number 13 is the tobacco use question. You have to answer that. Um, number 14, you are a new member because this is a new plan. And then in the next box down, well actually in between the two boxes where it says coverage information, plan offered by employer, whichever plan you choose that will be the name of this, the plan at the top of these sheets. So it's either the Blue Essentials Bronze Plan or the Blue Essentials Silver Plan. And then your medical election will be who you're covering yourself and if you're covering anyone else. <coughs> if you do not have medical coverage, then you choose one of those options. If you're covered with your spouse on a plan, another plan, then just choose other and say that. Uh, under dental, our dental is separate from this plan, so choose no dental coverage. You can go ahead and mark these boxes as we're going through. Um, life coverage, I'm still, I'm pretty sure we get to keep our existing companion life policy and not, not an additional life through this policy. I'm checking on that and verifying that because it's uh, less expensive and more coverage. So uh, once I find that out, if you do have a change in beneficiary that you would like me to make, you can go ahead and put that new information right there and just kind of write new out to the side or change or something so that I know to go change it for you that that is something different than you had previously had. And then the next section is just your information if you are covering dependents. If you're not, then you would leave that blank and then sign it and date it. I need to get these back. Um, as always, it's kind of a time crunch because our plan goes effective April 1st. And the sooner, because this is a new plan, it takes a little bit longer. We are you know, switching from Blue Choice to Blue Cross. They are affiliated, but not the same company. So it is a new enrollment for them. And um, the sooner we get it in, the sooner they have it in the system and everybody gets their cards. 
for an April 1st prescription for anyone you. So I appreciate everyone's time. I know it's a lot to digest. So if you have any questions about your specific situation, please give